Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about something called photoelectron spectroscopy. I guess that's what a machine looks like. It's more of a physics thing than it is a chemistry thing. Um, it's not something that's normally taught to first year chemistry students. It's primarily taught, as far as I know, in physical chemistry or inorganic chemistry. Um, so for me, inorganic was my junior year and PCHEM was my senior year, so I'm not sure what this is. Um, I do know that the College Board, in their infinite wisdom, has decided that it needs to be part of the curriculum for the exam in May. So it is what it is. It's actually not that hard. And what it does do is it provides evidence for orbitals. Um, I know we've learned that Schrodinger and Maxwell and a bunch of other people contributed to determining the mathematical relationship of orbitals and quantum numbers but this is physical evidence where they can actually prove it and so the way it works is in photoelectron spectroscopy they take a photon of a certain energy it hits an electron it pops it off the atom and when it pops it off the atom it it's ionized it's an ionization energy but once it leaves it has a certain amount of kinetic energy so i have an energy of photon let's say it's an x-ray i hit this this is enough energy to pop the electron officially off the atom. And then once it starts moving past that, it has a certain amount of kinetic energy, one half mv squared. And what they can do from that is determine how many electrons there are to take off at various different levels within the atom. So they shoot the photon at it. They hit the electrons. The electrons come flying out. And they go through a slit, and this detector picks up what their kinetic energy is, or their velocity. And we know the mass, so we can calculate the kinetic energy. Okay, so when a photon hits the electron, the electron has enough energy to completely leave the atom. That's called ionization energy. The extra energy it uses for kinetic energy, velocity. And we can measure that. If we know the energy of the incoming photon, which we do, because we'll know its frequency, and the kinetic energy of the outgoing electron is measured, then all you have to do is subtract to find the ionization energy. And that's how they figure it out. You can do valence orbitals, so the ones that are on the outside edge of the atom, but you, if you add enough energy, you can pop off these core electrons all the way down to where you have nothing left except the nucleus. You've literally pulled all the electrons off if you use a photon that has enough energy. So the energy of our photon is E equals HF. Planck's constant times the frequency. And that energy of the photon is equal to the ionization energy it takes to get it off the atom. And this kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. So if I want to find the ionization energy, all I have to do is take HF and subtract the kinetic energy it had. And that'll tell me the energy involved in moving it out. So if I have a core electron, moving it out has a lot of ionization energy. If I have a valence electron, moving it out has very low ionization energy. And we can map the amount of energy it takes and how many electrons are exhibiting that. And what we get is a spectra, a picture. Okay, so this is what it looks like for lithium. Okay, and I'm gonna explain it uh, on the next slide. But you've got two different peaks. Um, I want you to notice in particular that the numbers on the x-axis are reversed. So zero is somewhere over here, and over here is where the nucleus is. Okay, and I'll talk more about it on the next slide. The peaks for this one, this peak is at 6.26 megajoules, and this peak is 0.52 megajoules. And remember, it's called binding energy. What it means is the amount of energy that's holding those electrons on. So if you're talking, here's your nucleus, energy levels, this electron has to move to move outside has to move a long way so that's the nucleus this electron has to move a long ways to get ionization energy out if i have one here its ionization energy is actually less and that's what this is representing so the 0.52 is referring to an electron that is closer to the outside edge the 6.26 is the one that's closer to the nucleus okay so each peak represents, first of all, the relative numbers of electrons that require that amount of energy. So if you notice, this peak is two times as large as that peak. What that means is there's twice as many electrons 
in this peak than here. Okay. And also, it's got a reverse orientation. What this means is this is the nucleus. And if we're talking lithium, lithium is 1s2, 2s1. Those 1s2 electrons live here. It takes 6.26 megajoules to pull them completely off because they're the ones that are closest to the nucleus. And the attraction for them is greater. This is my valence electron. I only have one of them, so the peak is half as large, and it's closer to the edge, so to speak, or the surface, I guess, of the atom, and so it's easier to remove and it takes less energy. All right, so let's look at neon. Okay, neon, if you remember, has 10 protons, and its electron configuration, if we were to do it the long way, is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. And if you notice, there's three peaks, one, two, three right here, right here, and right here. Again, zero is over there. This is telling me where the nucleus is. The electrons that are closest to the nucleus have the greatest binding energy because the attraction is strongest, Coulomb's law. Notice my two peaks at the very beginning are the same height because I have the same number of electrons. So this is my 1s2, this is my 2s2. This peak, however, is three times as large. What that means is it has three times as many electrons. That means it's the 2p6, okay? And that's literally how you read them. When they give them to you, they're pretty much always going to give it to you, the complete photo, photo electron spectroscopy. If not, they'll tell you, but primarily it's gonna, it's gonna give you everything. And so all you have to do to figure it out is identify which orbitals. The nucleus is always at the <clears throat> biggest number, and that would be the 1s orbital. The one next to it's 2s, then 2p, and it just keeps going. Okay, let's look at this one. Which element could be represented by the spectrum below? So this is where you have to identify it. Okay, again, binding energy, here's my nucleus. If that's my nucleus, that tells me this is the 1s2. And then since this peak and that peak are the same height, that's the 2s2. But if I notice this one, it's only 1.5 times as large, which means it only has three electrons in it. And that's my 2p orbital. So I have 1s2, 2s2, 2p3, 2 plus 2 plus 3 is 7. That means this guy is nitrogen. Okay, another question. Now this one is only going to show you the peaks of the 2s orbital. So they're telling you right away that this is a 2s and this is a 2s. And so if we know that this is lithium, 1s2, 2s1, 1s2, 2s2, we can explain some things about it. First of all, the height. Beryllium has twice as many electrons. That's why the peak is twice as tall. The other thing that's interesting to notice is that this is at about 11, and this one is at about 6. Okay, and let's think about that. That's how much energy it takes to remove the 2s electrons in beryllium and lithium. Lithium has three protons, beryllium has four. Greater effective nuclear charge means there's a stronger attraction between the protons and electrons, and they're more difficult to remove. So that would be A. Next one. Okay, so now I'm going to show you two of them for one for phosphorus and one for sulfur. Okay. Let's remember sulfur has 16 protons, phosphorus has 15 protons. Again, the nucleus is over here. So these two peaks are 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p. It's twice as tall, makes it 4. This one's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p3 because it's only one and a half times as tall. So a couple of things to notice. First of all, this peak and this peak, sulfur's is much higher because sulfur has a greater effective nuclear charge. The greater effective charge means there's a stronger attraction to the electrons. Then if we look at this one, it's at 1, and that's at 1.06. So this is, even though it's not drawn, scaled properly, it's actually to the right of it. Okay, it's over there someplace. And that's because sulfur has 3P4. It's got all these extra electrons 
in the orbital, and that extra electron causes some repulsion, which makes it easier to remove.